Hey again. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing. I couldn't sleep. It's like 4 a.m. We're out in the garage. It's 30 degrees out Fahrenheit. Rock and roll. <clears throat> I figured, hey, why not just make a video? Burn some time this way. It tells you, don't have coffee at midnight if you're trying to get some sleep. Anyways, for clients that are out there, let's talk about how to get ready for a new tattoo. Rock and roll. All right, <clears throat> not that's over with. How to get ready for a new tattoo. This is something that, <clears throat> depending on who you talk to, is going to be you know, something as simple as just like, I'll oh, just show up. Or if you're talking to somebody like me, this is going to be a long list of things that you need to prepare. So <clears throat> let's go over some of the things that you need to do before a tattoo to make sure that you are in tip-top shape to be able to sit through it, regardless of how long that the session is, which maybe we could break it up into short and long, hey? Okay? Yeah, it actually might work. And maybe both. Well, let's just split this right down the middle for our little talk today. Also, got new pens. Uh -huh. Right on. <laughs> Anyways. We'll give you some information about how to sit for these things, right? And how to come best prepared. Now, this isn't about like how you should treat your tattoo artists because like they're human beings. They shouldn't be put up on a pedestal. They're not royalty, you know, they're just doing their job. So if you're a client and you feel like you're having to, you know, kowtow to this person who's gonna be putting uh, artwork on you for the rest of your life, maybe you're going to the wrong person. Anyways, that's a different talk altogether. So how to get ready for a new tattoo? And we'll keep this short and long on the side here. And we'll just keep our general stuff. Because I don't think we'll need that much actually to get prepped for this on the other side. So, number one is you have to get a good night's sleep. Okay, why is this? So, when we sleep, our body processes all the stuff that we've built up through the day, right? It's good. It refreshes our neurotransmitters. Our brain is better at processing chemicals. And it just, like, helps alleviate stress. It decreases cortisol in the body. So when we have a good night's sleep, we're actually going to be better prepared for the trauma that is going to take place during a tattoo. If you have ever stayed up all night before, <clears throat> which if you're, you know, 18 years old or above, I imagine in the Western world that you have done that, that you know how your body just feels heavy. It feels tired. And... When you're in that situation or space, mentally or physically, your body's ability to actually cope with pain decreases, right? Because it's already stressed and it's under pressure. So when you go into have a tattoo, if you haven't had a good night's sleep, you will feel the pain more, which isn't good. <laughs> a byproduct of that as well is that you're gonna see increased inflammation, which could decrease the quality of your heel. It could you know, make the tattoo take longer because you're having to take more frequent breaks. You could have heavier scabbing. There could be pigment loss. There could be a whole bunch of stuff. So. The very first thing I usually tell people is, if you have a good night's sleep, you're good to go. If you haven't, maybe think about rescheduling your tattoo. Right. Number two, and everyone knows this one, have food. <clears throat> With two to four hours before the actual session, okay? What does this do? Our body needs energy. So when we eat something, you're giving it the fuel it needs to power through later parts in the day. Like I said, it's 4 a.m. here, so I'm going to have some fuel that's caffeinated right now. So if you don't eat, some of the things that can happen are, like, let's just break this down. When you go in pain, your body utilizes energy stores inside of it to help fight that pain. It needs chemicals that are being created to fire along those electrochemical sensors inside your body called the nerves and, and stimulate stuff in your brain so your body knows how to deal with trauma, right? That's what pain is. Pain is your body letting you know, hey, I'm here and something's wrong. So if you don't have enough food and you don't have enough like calories in your body for it to like work efficiently, it starts to change its actual processes and how it actually like gets energy, right? Instead of using quick glucose reserves that normally are there from us eating, you know, carbohydrates or something throughout the day, <clears throat> your body switches over to a ketogenic state where it has to actually start breaking down fats, which takes more energy and it's harder on your body. 
And sometimes let's say that you have a blood sugar issue like you're hypoglycemic or you're diabetic. If you haven't had enough food beforehand, your blood sugar levels are going to modulate and you can get into a space where maybe you'll pass out. Maybe you go into a coma and you can even die. So <laughs> that's really important, needless to say, and you're actually gonna be able to better un like handle the pain if you've eaten and gotten sleep than any other tip that anyone else has given you. That's like regardless of what's going on. Oh, you can use this numbing cream, which don't use numbing creams. That's horrible. It's not healthy. If you do these two things, you can almost be guaranteed for a, a positive outcome, as long as the tattooer knows what they're doing, above all else, right? So these are, these are our two gold standards, which I don't have gold, but I do have blue. And these are the things we, we wanna do regardless, right? This is the stuff that, <clears throat> if you haven't had both of these things, you may wanna think about either delaying it until you get food or until you have a good night's sleep. Now this is especially important for longer sittings. If your sitting is going to go for more than maybe two to three and a half hours, which usually the break point at this is gonna be 3.5 hours, right? Over that, we're gonna be considering it a very long session. If you don't have these two foundational aspects of your person taken care of, you will not be able to sit for long enough to actually have the tattoo done. Or if you do, it is going to be absolute torture. So make sure those things are done. So <clears throat> now we're gonna get into nitpicky easy stuff. <laughs> these are things that can help improve the quality of the tattoo or even just the general sit, which you don't have to do if you don't have the time. But if you do have the time or ability to plan ahead, these will actually help quite a bit. <clears throat> so number three, we're gonna have to get our aftercare set up and done before boop, the actual tattoo. Why do we do this? So, and what is it? If you have a product that you know you're gonna be using for your aftercare, or if you've talked to the artist beforehand, you go in and you see him, you be like, hey, I'm gonna get a tattoo. And they're like, oh, okay. And you say, well, what should my aftercare be? If they're triggered ahead of time, they can give you a product or recommendation or maybe even the actual aftercare instructions printed out so you know what to use for that time of the actual tattoo. And what you can do is start doing it a couple weeks before. Now, if they're a Oh, excuse me, if they're an artist that's going to be using products like Second, Cern, Second Skin uh, Tattoo Derm, Tegaderm, any of these other transparent adhesive bandages, when you go in beforehand, that's the time for them to do a patch test with it, right? Like take that product off on clean, unbroken skin, have them prep your skin and place it. And if you have a topical reaction to it, you know not to use it on the tattoo, right? At the same time, if they don't use products like transparent adhesive bandages and they say to use either a cream, ointment, or lotion, you can start using that product a couple weeks ahead of time to make sure that the same thing, you don't have a reaction in your skin. As well as, if you start doing it ahead of time, you can actually influence the skin's microbiome to be better accepting and willing of the product that you're gonna be putting on a fresh wound. And if you haven't been using the product before, trying something new and influencing all of that stuff that lives on the outside of our body that you know helps keep us safe at times until we get a mark or scar and leads to an opportunistic infection you can influence it you can change that stuff because every time you put a new product on your skin you're influencing all the microbes that live on the outside of it right you don't want to do that when you have a fresh wound <laughs> it's just going to lead to this epic battle of you know germ proportions where there is a greater chance of you actually being able to pick up an infection afterwards. So start doing that before. And, and I mean, at the same time, if you're using a product and you do have a, a reaction to it, wouldn't you be glad that you didn't put that on a wound? Anyways, so number three, that one's always really fun. <clears throat> Get your aftercare set up and start it before. Let me reset the camera. Remember to like, subscribe, and if you want to show support for the show, check out the video description for a link to our Buy Me A Coffee website thing. We appreciate any and all support that you've given us so far and hopefully will continue to in the future. All right, back at it. The light started flashing, my battery was going dead. Sorry about that. So number four, this is gonna be really, really, really important as well. Uh, bring some snacks. Oops, it's 4 a.m. so I'm not spelling that good. Bring some snacks. This is, this is really important when you're getting into, uh, especially longer settings, 
your body needs to have a constant replenishment of that fuel to make sure you'll be able to fight the pain effectively. And food also is a natural mood elevator, right? It can, it can give you feelings of euphoria depending on the types that you get. So having a couple snacks that you can have during the uh, session or like in between and breaks, uh, depending on local laws, if you're allowed to eat or have food in the area or not, always ask ahead of time. It's just great, right? You can just have a little bit of orange juice you can sip on if you like orange juice or another type of juice. Maybe a candy bar, get a cliff bar, get something like that. And you can just keep your body well energized for everything that's going to be going on. And this is really important for, like, we should just do this. One, one, two, two. This is really important for the long settings, right? I mean, regardless, I mean like, uh, number three is, yeah, that's pretty important too. But if you don't bring snacks for longer settings, especially over like three and a half hours, your body's just gonna become taxed. It's gonna become overloaded with all those chemicals that are telling you what's wrong with your body. And you're not gonna be able to just like sit and chill. And this is <clears throat> one of the tricks that we do with people who are gonna be sitting like really long hours. And I've had clients sit nine, 10, 12, 15 hours straight, which is, horrible on my physical body just sitting like this for 15 hours straight but they're able to do it as well because we have a regimented break schedule where they're able to like eat keep their body reserves up have a little break move around create circulation you know like get the body pumping and moving because if you're just sitting in one space forever it's not very healthy right that's why they have issues with people getting sick in hospital beds bed sores and stuff like this just because you know circulation is decreased so we have nurses coming and bend and move your legs make sure the stuff is moving fun right well <clears throat> we run out of space on this one let's go ahead and start another couple lines next on the block <clears throat> This is gonna sound weird, right? Because you're trying to get ready for something. But think about the clothes you're gonna wear and how they can access the tattoo, right? Now this is one of two bits on this. I mean, past access, you're also gonna be worrying about having something comfortable to wear after the tattoo uh, appointment. <clears throat> but if you're getting like a tattoo on your back, going in wearing a coat like this and nothing else, is gonna possibly be uncomfortable for you if you have to stand, you know, half naked, three quarter naked, or fully naked to be able to expose the body part. And you're not comfortable taping dental bibs onto your maybe private parts, or you just have some, you know, body issues you don't feel comfortable with. So when you're thinking about the access to this stuff, especially with the back, bring a button up shirt. You can go to the, you know, the washroom, put it on backwards. It'll still be fully covered. There can be something on the back. Or if you're gonna be getting something on the higher thigh, you can bring in like maybe like, a set of like tie swimsuits or like some tidy whities or something else that's gonna be able to give the artist access. And this is really, really important as well because most shops don't just have separate rooms for everyone, right? You may just be in the pit where there is, you know, five, 10 other artists and clients plus their friends sitting around and doing this stuff. And if it's gonna make you feel uncomfortable to be standing there naked, right? which, you know, some people have issues with modesty, which is totally rad, then you're gonna have to prepare for that and think about that, right? At the same time, we can kind of break off this access, right? We'll go with leaving as well. When you leave the appointment, if you have really tight fit clothing on top of a fresh wound, it can cause aggravations, right? If you have a big piece on your calf and you're wearing skinny jeans, when you walk out, you can think about the material rubbing on it. It's gonna be really uncomfortable. So you want to plan ahead. Also, don't wear white to a tattoo appointment unless you're cool with it just getting ruined, right? The tattoo will seep, exudate, possibly a little bit of blood depending on who's doing it. And when we do the actual tattoo procedure, more pigment goes into the skin than is actually needed. So about 70% stays and 30% is either expelled during the healing process or absorbed into the body and trapped in the lymph nodes. So when thinking about that, if you have a really nice expensive pair of white pants or light jeans or some fancy t-shirt that you don't want to get ruined, don't bring it to the appointment, especially if it's your first tattoo. <clears throat> had it happen many times <laughs> that's not good we had one person come in once and we were just like hey you know like bright white everything just pearly, just beautiful beautiful clothing something far more chic than i would ever wear 
And we just like took a break for like 30 minutes. I was just like, hey, hop up to the Goodwill. You know, it's like a block or two away from the shop and just go grab some junk clothes, right? Get that, put those on because we know we don't want to ruin all of this. I mean, I think that like her shoes were worth more than like my entire white wardrobe, which was kind of fun. But anyways, it's very, very, very important before you go. This is gonna, it doesn't really matter on either. I mean, realistically, like, I think that this numerical system and this extra graph up top was a bit overkill, especially because I erased half the stuff, but that's all right. We could just go with it. Biggest things, I think I talk enough that we can get through most everything without having to have a reminder on where to go back. <laughs> all right, <clears throat> number six, and I think this might be the last thing that you need to worry about when it's actually gonna come into planning for the tattoo is <clears throat> plan with travel uh, 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 time. Boop, boop. So when you're gonna go and get your, your tattoo, if it's on a lunch break and you think that the tattoo is gonna take an hour and you can do it, well, make sure you include travel time to and from. <laughs> We've had sometimes where people have like childcare that's on very short notice. Um, maybe they have to like, you know, duck out and leave, or maybe there's something else that's going on. But when you're going in to get your tattoo, always include the travel time. Um, I have many people who travel from all over the country who set aside specific days or weeks that they're gonna be coming into the shop to get work done. So that's a bit different. But for my locals, I'm always telling them to remember, because the local to me is up to an hour to an hour and 45 drive away. Make sure you plan for that, because if something goes wrong, your car breaks down, your kid gets hurt, you, work calls you in, something, you, you have to be able to account for that in your actual time, right? That's also something that you're gonna be paying out of pocket past just the money as the time spent. Excuse me, that's coffee is destroying my stomach. Maybe I should go get some food or something. Anyways. I think this is <clears throat> kind of the easiest way to deal with this stuff anyways. It's like, it, it's just always trying to stay more prepared than is necessary. You know, over-preparedness is probably better than not when you're gonna be going for a, a medical procedure, which is what a tattoo is. So this stuff is, is pretty basic. We have a, an article on the website with a PDF you can print out that talks about some of this stuff as well. So if you like that, you can always go to the website. Bettertattooing.com. Like the video, like, subscribe. If you think of some other stuff you like to, you know, do before you get ready, this is not a, a complete list, of course. It's 4 a.m. and I'm doing this off the dome with no script. Um, hit it down in the comments. Like, subscribe. Don't do the notification thing because that's just annoying. It'll give you PTSD. But uh, I can't tell you what to do. So punk rock. Anyways, that's it for today. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.